Hi everybody, welcome back. It is your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we're getting into topic 6.7, which is on mutations, and this is likely going to be a two-part video here. Um, so what are mutations? Why are they important? That's what we're going to be discussing in this video. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of them, and we've talked about them in class before, but what exactly are they? How do they work, and how? what changes might they cause? Um, so what a mutation is, is right here on this slide. It's any random change to the genetic information of a cell or, or a virus is a mutation because remember viruses have DNA and sometimes RNA as well. Um, mutations are the ultimate source of new genes and, and they are largely responsible for the genetic diversity of organisms. Okay, So if everybody had the same DNA, then there wouldn't be any variety of life on Earth which would bode really, really poorly for life on Earth. Okay, so life on Earth can become different from one another based on mutations and how those mutations affect their um, survival and reproduction. And that's what natural selection and evolution are all about, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. Okay, but a mutation is just simply a change to DNA, a random change to DNA. All right, so uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to say about that. I had something else, but I don't remember what it was. Uh, the normal function of genes results in the normal function of organisms. Mutations create new phenotypes. Okay, so if a mutation is a random change to a gene or a random change to uh, DNA, it's going to produce it's it's going to produce a different genotype and thus a new phenotype. And that's where where it really counts. If you're expressing a new trait, if you have a different phenotype, then that can cause some serious changes. Um, within the population, and we'll get to that later on. But we're going to first talk about our types of mutations um, right over here. Okay, so the first one, um, and we're going to discuss a few changes um, that this can make. It, uh, it's just called a point mutation. It's a change in a single nucleotide pair of a gene. All right, so uh, what we're going to do here, we're going to practice transcription and translation one more time. Uh, and I'm going to walk through several examples of how a point mutation can uh, result in different uh, with different phenotypes and different proteins made as and different gene expression. All right, so uh, one change in a nucleotide. Okay, so here's my DNA. Uh, if you want, you can. Well, I'm already clicking it, but uh, here's what the mRNA would look like after transcription of this DNA strand, and this is what the protein would be. So we get methionine, valine, proline, leucine. I think that would be asparagine, and then a stop codon. Um, okay, so uh, this, this DNA is not mutated yet, but what if we change that one, that one nucleotide, what if we change it to, say, an A? Okay, it was a G before, and now it's an A. What happens? Well, in this case, nothing. Okay, if you, you know, take your codon chart, or you, you do your base pairing, you take your codon chart, it's going to produce the same protein, okay, even though we changed one nucleotide. That's called a silent mutation. Um, these happen all the time, and we don't know about it because, well, there's no observable effect on the phenotype, right? The protein did not change at all, so that's why we call it a silent mutation. It doesn't cause a change. All right, so uh, this is GGG before, now it's GAG. Again, a point mutation, but uh, is it going to cause any different change? Yes, it will. If we, you know, transcribe it, we get a new mRNA codon, and thus we get a new uh, we get a new protein, really. We get a one amino acid substitution. And what this is called, this is called a missense mutation, uh, which is a substitution that changes one amino acid to another. And again, it's still a point mutation in that only one nucleotide is changed, but that one nucleotide change is enough to cause one amino acid change as well. Okay, so that's a missense mutation. All right, and then, okay, so for this one, I want you to pretend that I only changed one base. So this is GGG before, um, and I changed it to ATC. Okay, just pretend it's still one, um, one base change, one point change. Okay, so just pretend with me. Thank you. All right, um, if we transcribe and translate this, what do we get? Well, we get an early stop codon. Okay, we were supposed to have the stop codon down here, but we get another one um, early on, and it cuts the protein short. Um, so the name for this mutation, which is, again, supposed to be a point mutation, um, is called a nonsense mutation. Nonsense! When a translation is determined, determinated prematurely resulting in a short, shorter polypeptide. Um, that is called a nonsense. So we have a silent one that doesn't make any change. We have a missense, which only changes one amino acid, and a nonsense mutation, 
which causes a stop codon and cuts the polypeptide off prematurely. Okay, those are all three types of point mutations. But let's talk about a more serious one. Um, let's talk about an insertion or deletion. Um, an insertion or deletion uh, mutation is an addition or, ooh, yikes, it is a loss of a nucleotide pair, not a lose. Okay, uh, so here's my normal uh, DNA, here's my normal mRNA. What if I take out that T, okay, this T, and I, if I just delete it from the nucleotide sequence? And this can happen. This is, uh, this is a typical deletion here. Okay, so if I delete that, what do I get? Um, I get something that is brand new um, when it comes to our mRNA uh, transcript, if we just simply get rid of that. See, check it out. This was my original, right? And then if I take, uh, if I take out this T, look at the pairs of, uh, look at the codons now. Look at the triplet pairs now. Um, look at this, you see, it goes ACC, ATG, and it changes the whole, what we call the reading frame of the uh, the DNA sequence and as a result this is the mRNA that's produced from it okay so this can this can cause a whole different change um, in the protein that's made so check it out without the deletion this is the protein that we got before this is the polypeptide sequence but with that one change that one deletion right at the beginning this is the, our brand new uh, this is our brand new protein that we got, and it's completely different, maybe with the exception of valine there, um, than our first one. All right, so this is a serious mutation. Lots of amino acids are going to change. So the most serious type of mutation, because it changes the reading frame, is called a frame shift mutation. And that occurs when the number of nucleotides inserted or deleted is not a multiple of three. Okay, I only took out one. So that changes what we call the reading frame. If I took out three, maybe it wouldn't have a huge um, impact on the translation. But it changes the gr triplet grouping of nucleotides red during translation. Okay? So by taking out that T, I adjusted the reading frame on the mRNA and just the re adjusted the reading frame on the uh, for the translation as well. I can't talk right now. Okay? And we ended up with a brand new protein. Okay. What are mutations caused by? They're caused by errors in DNA replication or in repair. Okay, so we talked about replication earlier on in this unit, um, and sometimes when you know there are semi-conservative replication is going on, DNA polymerase comes through. It makes mistakes sometimes. Maybe there's a uh, mismatched uh, pair of nucleotides, or maybe it makes a substitution. And in reality, mutations only occur every one in ten to the tenth power nucleotides is altered, um, which sounds like a lot, right? But you've got like millions, perhaps even billions of different, uh, of different nucleotides within your genes, right? And your cells are, are dividing and making new uh, copies of themselves all day, every day. So this happens more often than you might think. Um, and it's not really a big deal if we're talking about somatic cells, um, just normal cells doing mitosis. But if it does happen in gametes, if this happens in gametes, then it could affect the phenotype of the whole organism, the sex cells, right? So the sperm or egg, if this happens, um, it can affect the whole organism. But somat uh, the somatic level, it's not usually a huge deal, usually a huge deal. Okay, so anything that causes mutations is called a mutagen. It's a physical or chemical reagent that can cause mutations. Um, some examples of mutagens, they can be types of radiation, ultraviolet, um, x-rays, gamma rays, various toxic chemicals, things like carcinogens, um, things that you can find in cigarette smoke um, are mutagens. Asbestos is a mutagen, and then it's a carcinogen. Um, yeah, so that's what, that's what mutations are caused by. But here's the thing about mutations. They sound like a really, really bad thing, right? You're mutated, right? It sounds like a sci-fi type thing. But mutations can often really, really be a good thing. And when they're a good thing, they lead to evolution by natural selection, which is like the whole basis of biology, really. Um, they can be detrimental, beneficial, or neutral depending on their environment. Some phenotypes are subject to natural selection in, the, in that they enhance survival and reproduction. Okay, so if you're an organism and you get a mutation that, you know, gives you an advantage over others in your environment, then that means you're more likely to survive and reproduce, meaning that you're more likely to pass on 
that mutation, that beneficial mutation in your genes to your offspring. And that's what, that's what natural selection is. That's what evolution is. That, the, so mutations are the whole basis of genetic diversity on Earth. Okay? A classic example of how a mutation has become beneficial okay, was that uh, polar bears evolved from the, you know, brown bears. And brown bears used to live near the Arctic Circle. Um, and once upon a time, I don't know the exact, <laughs> I don't know ex the exact time period, but I'm sure it can be looked up. Um, there was a mutation within the polar bear's fur color, and some individuals were born with a white or clear coat, um, and that made them, gave them an advantage over their their brown colored offspring, uh, or excuse me, their brown colored uh, neighbors, in that their clear or white fur, I've heard their transparent fur uh, before allows them to blend into their environment and makes them better at hunting, thus re increasing their survival and reproduction. And as they pass down that trait for having a clear coat to their offspring, because they're better at surviving um, than the ones that did not blend in with their environment. Okay, so polar bear's fur color developed as a beneficial mutation in an icy Arctic circle. Okay, and eventually it went through the process of speciation and, went and became a brand new species of bear. Okay, so this is an example of when a mutation can be very beneficial, when an organism's color allows it to blend in with its environment and gives it a survival advantage. Okay, uh, last thing I want to talk about in this video is that errors in cell division can result in phenotypic changes. Um, and technically, aneuploidy is, and non-disjunctions are types of mutations in that they um, alter the phenotype. It's a random change to the DNA and alter the phenotype of the organism. Um, but it's not like a change in the specific DNA of the chromosome, right? So we've talked about this before. Aneuploidy is the change in the chromosome number. It's produced by a non-disjunction when uh, chromosomes do not separate properly during meiosis, right? So disorders like Down syndrome and Turner syndrome are a result of an aneuploidy. Okay, um, that is it for this video. We're going to talk about bacteria and why they're important and why their mutations are important and how they can share mutations with each other in the next video. All right, have a good one. See you next time.